awesome sauce. Scene one, Apple, take one. What's up everybody, how's it going out there? So in this video, I am going to be, I don't want to say restoring, but I should say maybe rejuvenating, restoring, cleaning decanters. And these particular decanters originally had alcohol in them. And if I'm not mistaken, this is from 1959, but it could also be a little bit older as well, according to the research that I had done. What was in there? Your guess is as good as mine, but it was probably some type of brandy or uh, whiskey. And I had found these at a thrift store, thrift shop, uh, locally here, and I spent about 20 bucks for them, and I thought, this is what I need so I could pour my whiskey in there. Now, there's a problem. Actually, there's a multitude of problems. The first is, is these are not clean. Um, the second is I have no idea what somebody else had stored in this after the initial whiskey, right? So we have to make sure, I mean, for all I know, somebody was storing cyanide in here. I, I have no idea what they were storing. Um, <clears throat> so I need to make sure that this is very, very clean on the inside on both of them. Um, and then sanitize all that other good stuff. And then that way I, I can put something in there and uh, not worry about it. The second thing is the top here. And uh, there's usually cork that goes around right here that ends up making the seal, but that cork is no longer there. So what we have to do is we're gonna have to recork this, which isn't really that uh, too hard of a uh, task to do. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna end up cleaning out uh, the insides here. This one, the rim is okay, um, but this one, there's like some cork that's been like dried up on there. I don't know if you can see that. And uh, looking inside, it looks pretty clean, but look, just because it looks clean doesn't mean that it is. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to clean it. So how are we going to do this? I'm going to use a bottle brush to clean out the tops. Okay, so I'm going to scrub it with a bottle brush. And um, as soon as I'm done with that, with some soapy water inside here, I'm gonna throw some brown rice inside here. And the brown rice is gonna be the abrasive. And then so that way I can spin it around and shake it and all that other good stuff and you know move it across the bottom like this to clean up any remnants of anything that's down on the bottom. Because I wanna clean all that stuff out as best as I can. I'm gonna be using brown rice because it's got husks on it. And it's a little, it's a little, um, it takes longer for it to absorb water. And, um, you know, originally I thought I'll put BBs in here, but then I started thinking, no, BBs are going to scratch the inside of this thing up. Um, same thing with like rocks or pebbles or sand or whatever, it's probably going to scratch it up. Um, but we need some type of abrasive inside there. And I'm thinking, best thing would probably be brown rice. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Okay, so I've put some rice inside here that you can see. And then so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up putting some water in here, maybe up to here. And then just shake, shake, shake as much as I can to try to clean out the inside. And then when it comes time to the top, I'm gonna end up just using an old bottle brush to clean out the uh, rim. And I can probably get a little bit on the inside too um, with that. And we'll try to get as much as we can. And then as soon as I'm done, uh, cleaning out the inside. If you have tough stains, you can obviously um, soak it um, for a while to kind of help break that up. But as soon as that's done, I'm going to show you the next step. Okay, so step one is complete, at least for the top, uh, at least for the bottoms, the tops. I'm going to have to do the same thing too, which uh, not that big of a deal. We're going to do something a little different with those guys. All right, <clears throat> with the bottle brush, I was able to get about right to here, which isn't bad. I scrubbed the, the rims real well and everything. Even with that being done and then swishing around the brown rice and everything inside there, they actually have uh, beads that you can get for cleaning decanters. You can order it online. Um, even with that being done, to me, this is still not clean enough. And I, I cleaned it using Dawn dishwashing liquid. So what we're going to do is a second step, and the second step is basically this. This is OxyClean. I'm going to be putting OxyClean inside here. And uh, put hot water inside this as well. And we're going to let the OxyClean do some cleaning uh, that the brush couldn't do. Okay. Um, and you want to, after you put your hot water in this, that right, looks good. Um, not boiling, just hot from this, the tap let this set inside the sink because this is going to start foaming up real well. 
and you want to bring this to the very, very top, okay, and let the let the oxyclean start breaking things down on a much smaller level with inside here. And I'm going to let this set probably about four hours or more. You can let it set overnight if you want to. And then at that point, we can rinse it out. And that should take a lot of stuff out of here if that's anything that's remaining. But that, that's only step two. We have other steps. So let me go ahead, fill this up with hot water, and just let this uh, OxyClean do its job. Okay, so now that these have been filled, I'm just going to let them set in the sink. And they're filled all the way to the top, and I'm going to let it foam. And like I said, let it sit in there for at least four hours, maybe even better overnight. You see, we have a slight problem because I need to clean out these guys really well, and there's really no way for me to get inside there without using some kind of liquid. So, same thing, I need to be able to put things in here and let, uh, see, I've got stuff, I got cork still, um, but I need to find a container that I can put these guys in with some OxyClean and then let the OxyClean do its magic both inside and out. And then um, the OxyClean should also end up help, helping uh, remove any of the old cork as well as there's anything that's embedded in this plastic over all of these years, it, it'll get rid of it. So put it in a glass bowl, put it in a big glass or whatever it takes, a vase, doesn't make a difference, but OxyClean and water. Okay, so what I've done is I have soaked both of these in the um, OxyClean and water overnight. And after I did that, I emptied it out, rinsed it out real well. And then I put half white vinegar and then the rest water. Once again, soak these guys, same thing, vinegar and water, overnight. Then the third day, emptied all of it, rinsed it out. And then I put about a quarter of a cup of bleach in both of these and then soaked these guys as well as in bleach water. And I let that stuff do it for about eight hours, rinsed everything off. Okay. So now at this point, there's going to be one more bottle scrubbing, just like we did at the beginning with Dawn and a baby bottle uh, brush. But I'm going to end up getting a larger baby bottle brush so I can get to the bottom a little bit better. But this um, should be completely clean, done, ready to roll, and safe for um, putting anything that you want really inside here. Okay. Now, if you want to take it an extra step because um, you want to be able to break down anything that uh, has been stored in here and you don't know for sure exactly what had been stored, what we can do is we can put a solvent inside here as well. So you can get, go out and buy some cheap vodka and pour vodka inside here as well. So that way if there's anything inside here that we need a solvent to break down, the alcohol and the vodka can break it down. Um, or you can even use acetone, believe it or not, and then just rinse out the acetone. And you'd want to do that probably right after you do the initial cleaning of it uh, with the initial scrub and the initial OxyClean. And then after that, um, you could do that. And then that way you can just make sure that there's absolutely no remnants of anything inside here at all. This I know is very clean now. I mean, I'm, I'm confident enough to drink out of this and not worry about getting sick or, or whatever. All remnants of the cork and everything are gone though. And all we have now is just our two little pieces of plastic here which look nice and clean compared to what they originally looked like. And now what we need to do is we need to end up uh, creating that cork seal around it again. Okay, so we end up having some old pieces of silicone or plastic here. And these things are just hard as can be and there's no way I'm gonna be able to slip it off of this. So I've heated up some water and I'm gonna let this uh, warm up here maybe for about 30 seconds or so and it should uh, soften it up enough that I can pop it off. And there we go, that works. Which means this guy will slip off as well. So we, if we want to get new ones, we can, or if we just want to reuse these and clean them better, we can. We can also end up uh, scrubbing this section better if we want to. Make sure that there's no old glue or anything on there, but now we're golden. Now, there's some people that what they'll do is they'll talk about getting a, a roll of cork and then they'll kind of cut it and glue it and put it around here and say, there you go, you're good to go. Um, I'm hesitant to do that because there's going to be a line of uh, where the cork attaches that the adhesive will be there 
And second is a lot of times that cork is just like cork pieces that have been glued together. And I don't know if that glue is food safe or if it's going to break down with alcohol. So what I think I'm going to do is just get a cork that fits the inside of the bottle. Drill a hole that is just ever so slightly um, smaller than the outside uh, circumference of this and then um, slip it over the top of it and I won't even need to have glue uh, for anything like that and then I can you know I can put this on first slip it over and then put this warm this piece back up and then slip this over on top of it to hold that cork in place you won't really need glue because when you end up pushing this inside let me put this over here when you end up pushing this inside, there'll be a compression fit. So the, the more you push the lid in, the tighter the cork will wrap around the uh, post here. Okay, so this is what I decided to do is I was as careful as I could to run a cork screw down the center of a bottle of wine, take the cork out. And then I roughly measured about the distance here and then cut it in half. This, um, originally had been compressed because it was sitting in that bottle for a long time. So what I've done is I've been soaking this in hot water and um, by doing so it doesn't even want to fit inside here anymore, which is good. And the lower portion of it, which is tapered, I'm soaking in hot water to try to get it to expand as well. So that way I can um, use that for the base of it. After I get it where it's uh, snug in this, I'm going to end up taking a drill bit and I'm going to drill through it. And the, the type of drill bit that I'm going to be using was known as a brad tip. Okay, so zero this out. And if I come over here and I make a tight fit, we got a 0.61 basically, 0.6, yeah, 0.60, 0.60. And uh, we need to get a drill bit that's going to fit that. And um, as far as my brad points, I don't have too many that are going to end up uh, doing that. This is a brad tip, okay, and this is what the type that I want to use. This is a half inch, and uh, what I want to do is I want to drill right down the center of this. This is about there. I'm literally not putting any pressure on this at all. Um, I'm just letting the not even the weight of the drill because this, this, this doesn't drill as much as it kind of grinds out. Um, I can actually smell the wine that was in this. And this part is a little dangerous, guys, I'm not going to lie. But I'm really good with a drill, so I'm not worried about, you know, me um, drilling into my hands. But if you're worried about it, put this in a pair of pliers or something, that, but don't squeeze too hard because then it'll deform the cork. Um, and of course if you have a drill press you can uh, do this with a drill press and uh, make it more accurate. It kind of looks like we might have a hole that had started right here. careful with this thing. I'm going to end up putting the initial piece back down here, just where, like it usually is. This is softened and it's been heated, and I'm going to gently work it over the top here. Push it down as far as I can get it. I'm going to use a razor here to uh, dial this in right here on, on the edge. Um, make sure that I have a little bit of room for the uh, little piece of plastic. And now with this being on, what we have to do is we actually have to sand this around the outside until it can actually fit because at this point, this is too tight, it won't fit in there. So we have to sand that. And we also know that there's water in this that's caused it to expand. So we can take a hairdryer to it, shrink it with heat first, and then afterwards we can sand what we need to sand on there. The long drawn out process of sanding the cork
cork to where it's a snug fit, but not overly tight, not too loose. And <clears throat> this is going to take a while. And I'm trying to do it at an angle where the face of it is a little bit uh, more tapered than the, the rear of it. And also this is where you can fix your mess up of not drilling at a perfect uh, right angle. Okay guys, so I've been sanding, I just got done um, uh, rinsing off all the cork dust and everything like that. Um, and I have this now where if I put this in and with a little bit of force, we end up getting a nice seal. And you can tell we have a nice seal because you end up seeing this nice straight uh, uh, cork appearance right here. That's perfect because now we know nothing can get out of here. So now what I've done is I've put some cheap vodka inside here, switched it around real good and everything like that. This is going to be acting like a solvent. So just in case there's anything else in here that I haven't been able to actually remove by all the other means, this will end up helping because the alcohol will act as a solvent, okay? And then now what we need to do is we need to put some in the uh, lid, but we also need to do the leakage test. So what we'll do is we'll take this turned upside down, make sure that this obviously it's got a good enough seal that the lid does not come off, which this does not. Hold it upside down. The vodka is going in there, and run your finger gently around this to see if there's any vodka, and we don't see any, so we have a good seal here. Okay, and I'm going to let this um, vodka stay inside here for probably about eight hours or so, and occasionally give it a shake, you know, um, just to make sure that anything that's inside here has been cleaned out. And then eight hours later, you put in whatever kind of alcohol you want to put in here. This particular one is wild turkey. And uh, yeah, we got this one, I'll probably put scotch in the other. But anyway guys, that is that. Um, that's how you go about restoring a old decanter. Uh, we got a good seal, it's been cleaned out. This is safe, we're good to go. If you like this video, make sure you click like, make sure you click subscribe. Uh, check out another video. So, got lots more cool things like this. So, until next time, talk to you later.